twin supercharger. 1,050 horsepower on 93 octane pump gas. I think the words you're looking for here are bad mama jama. LS engines have been built in practically every combination imaginable, but how often have you seen a street performance build with twin centrifugal superchargers? This build up is being handled by my friends at Prestige Motorsports to be given away by Holly. The plan is to build an engine that can handle tons of power without being so high strung that it requires constant rebuilds. So a Dart LS Next Pro Iron Block is chosen for the foundation. Prestige ran it through its complete machining processes to ensure that all the dimensions are exactly to spec, including honing with torque plates bolted in place to make sure that the cylinder bores stay nice and round once the cylinder heads are torqued into place. The Dart LS Next Pro Iron Block is obviously built for performance. This is the larger bore version that will be stuffed with 4 inch 125 thousandths diameter pistons. One of the many advantages of the LS Next Pro when it comes to boosted applications is the deck is extra thick and there are six head bolts surrounding each cylinder bore. The crankshaft is a 4340 steel forging from Eagle with 4 inches of stroke. Combined with the 4 inch 125 thousandths pistons, that will make final displacement 427 cubic inches. Prestige is balancing it up for a set of eagle rods and pistons from DSS Racing, all with an internal balance. The crank has a four inch stroke with a standard 2.559 main journal and two 100 rod journals. The rods are an H-beam design, which is usually a little lighter than the equivalent I-beams. These are Eagle 4340 forgings for great strength. They are six inches, 125 thousandths long, with a 927 bush pin. You'll notice that as Cody McCleary checks the bearing clearances with the King main bearings and drops in the crankshaft, that the LS Next Pro Block doesn't have the usual cross bolted LS layout. Instead, this block has a conventional small block four bolt main layout. Dart says the idea is that this setup eliminates the bay to bay breathing window seen in the LS, allowing main webs to be much beefier and therefore stronger. Deleting the windows also allows the cylinder bores to be extended by nearly another 400 thousandths of an inch into the bottom of the block. This provides additional piston skirt support for stroker applications. As you can tell, the block uses billet steel main caps for great bottom end strength. The pistons are from DSS Racing, like I've mentioned. They are a forging using 2618 aluminum alloy and have a 29cc dish to help keep the compression at a boost friendly level. Because they will be dealing with extra heat created by the boost, the ring gaps have been opened up to 28 thousandths of an inch for the top and 30 thousandths for the second. Once the pistons and rods have been mated by a thick walled floating wrist pin, McCleary knocks them into the cylinder bores and secures the rods to the crank with ARP 2000 bolts. Because Prestige and Holly don't know who will be winning this engine, they're using Holly's retrofit oil pan. Unlike a stock pan, this Holly cast and machine pan will provide maximum clearance to the chassis and should fit most GM rear wheel drive vehicles that either use a small or a big block. For even bigger inch builds than our 427, it can handle up to a 4.25 inch stroke. With a stock oil filter, this pan holds six quarts of oil. The pickup tube also comes with the oil pan and it fit up perfectly. That black coating isn't paint. It's actually a ceramic coating that should look good for years to come. The cylinder heads are Prestige Motorsports own brand new castings. These are LS1 Cathedral Port style heads with a few updates to both the ports and chambers. The valves have been stood up a little straighter at 11 degrees versus a stock 15 to help airflow and the intakes are sized at 2 inches 55 thousandths while the exhausts are an inch 590 thousandths, both of which are bigger than stock. 
These are as cast cylinder heads that flow practically like ported heads because the investment casting quality in the ports and chambers are so good. The intake ports are big at 255 cc's and the combustion chambers are 61 cc's which helps keep the compression ratio low at 9.6 to 1 and ready to accept lots of boost. Up top, the valves are held against their seats with a set of nested valve springs from comp cams. All 16 are put in place with a 1 inch 800 thousandths installed height, which means they can handle well over 700 thousandths of an inch of lift before going into coil bind. Seat pressure will be approximately 140 pounds and the springs gain 400 pounds of pressure per inch. We missed the camshaft going into the block, but it's also from comp cams. It's a hydraulic roller with 238 degrees of duration on the intakes and 248 for the exhaust, both at 50 thousandths lift. It's ground with a 110 degree center line and 114 degrees of lobe separation. Lobe lift is 355 thousandths for the intakes and 351 thousandths for the exhaust. So with a 1.7 to 1 LS rocker arm, that adds up to 604 thousandths of an inch of valve lift for the intakes and 597 thousandths for the exhaust. Notice the extra head bolts extending from the cylinder head that will be bolted in from the block side. These are the extra head bolts we mentioned earlier that make this block and head combo particularly strong. Once the heads are in place, the rest of the bolts can go in. With this look into the lifter valley, you can see the plastic lifter guides that have been bolted in on the right. And on the left, you can see the washers and nuts that have been torqued into place on the studs we saw earlier extending out from the cylinder heads. It can be a bit of a pain to get these properly tightened and torqued into place, but it does really help increase the clamping load on the cylinder heads. Once the cylinder heads are secured, assembler Larry Broker turns his attention to the valve train. First up are the rocker bars, followed by a set of one-piece push rods. GM's engineers did a fantastic job with the LS rocker arm design. They're relatively lightweight and don't flex, so for this build a set of stock replacement rocker arms are used. But Prestige did upgrade the trunnions with a kit from Brian Tooley Racing which frees up motion of the rocker by using needle bearings in the trunnion and also helps improve overall valve train stability. Remember, this is a street friendly hydraulic roller setup. So after attaching the rockers to the rocker stand, broker tightens down each rocker until they just make contact with both the valve stem on one side and the tip of the push rod on the other. By gently spinning the push rod as he tightens the rocker, you can tell when the rocker arm starts to make contact. Then he gives the rocker bolt another quarter turn to set the plunger in the hydraulic lifter. Holly's modular low ram intake manifold is going to help move air from the superchargers to the combustion chambers. A great feature is the O-ring surfaces so you don't have to worry about an intake gasket leaking on you. As you can see, the fuel rails have already been installed along with the 1000cc fuel injectors. Notice how even though this is a low ram intake, the runners actually extend into the plenum a bit to help keep the runners just a little bit longer. This will help the low end response for a good torque off the line. Also notice that the entrances to the runners are curved for good healthy airflow into each port. The seal for the plenum top is also a simple and dependable o-ring. This plenum works with a Holley 105mm billet aluminum throttle body which moves tons of air. We're continuing the blacked out theme with the valve covers. These are Holly's two piece aluminum valve covers and Broker bolts the MSD coils to them before covering them up with the top half which really cleans up the look of the engine. And now we can turn our attention to the cherry on top of this build. The Torque Storm kit with not one but two superchargers bracketing the big Holly EFI throttle body. The Torque Storm kit includes everything necessary to get the engine up and running and even includes the accessory drives. 
What you're looking at here is the natural finish, but Torque Storm also offers its supercharger kits blacked out or polished. We especially like the big thick brackets that secure both supercharger compressors as well as the pulleys for the twin serpentine belts. No flex here. Everything bolted up exactly as it should and no machining or welding was necessary to get it all together. We've got to say, the finished product looks absolutely incredible. But at the Horsepower Monster, we're always about go over show. So we need to make sure that this supercharged 427 LS can walk that walk. So here's the setup on Prestige Motorsports engine dynamics. The air intakes are a little clumsy looking, but the idea is simply to pull the incoming air from an area away from the hot engine. All ignition timing and engine controls are handled by a Holly ECU and other Holly components. We'll get to the supercharger setup in just a moment, but first Prestige got the engine up and running in naturally aspirated form just to confirm that everything is working as it should be. So of course we had to make a naturally aspirated run. Five hundred twelve point two horsepower at six thousand RPM and four hundred ninety one point one foot pounds of torque at forty nine hundred RPM. Not bad considering the engine has a super low nine point six to one compression ratio because we know we'll be adding boost. So that was really just the pre-show, if you will, a baseline to see how much the Torque Storm superchargers can help. Torque Storm provides everything you need in its supercharger kits, including two blow-off valves. But we didn't want to cut or weld on anything because we don't know the vehicle the winner of this engine will want to put it in or the exact configuration. So Prestige pieced together this setup for testing. That includes two 3 inch pressure tubes coming out of the superchargers and feeding into a Y pipe just in front of the water to air intercooler. There's a 3.5 inch pipe coming out of the intercooler feeding into the throttle body. A single large blow off valve is used. So with all the tubing connected and the flex couplings tightened down, Prestige checked back over the tomb one more time and we were ready to make pulls. It certainly is a lot more fun with those pulleys spinning. We had the supercharger set up with Torxstorm's three and a quarter inch diameter supercharger pulley, and we saw slightly over 15 pounds of boost by the end of the pull at 6,700 RPM. By the way, the scale for boost is on the right hand side of this graph. We only pulled the engine to 6,400 RPM in the naturally aspirated setup because peak power had already rolled over at six grand. This time we pulled it to 6,700 RPM and peak power came at 6,600 where we saw a very healthy 1057.36 horsepower and that was on 93 octane pump gas no less. We also made 864 and a half foot pounds of torque at 6000 rpm and nowhere in the run did the engine make less than 600 foot pounds of torque. We also tracked air temps before and after the air to water intercooler. At around peak power the air coming out of the superchargers was 188 degrees Fahrenheit. But exiting the intercooler, it was down to 104. Meanwhile, while it was in the intake manifold, it was back up to 130 or so. An intercooler isn't part of this kit, but seeing that drop in temps, we definitely recommend one. Well over a grand on the horsepower meter is pretty impressive, especially when we're talking about pump gas and an engine well-mannered enough to drive to work every day. But of course, Prestige couldn't leave well enough alone. Instead of calling it a day, the mad scientists over there swapped out the three and a quarter inch diameter pulleys for smaller 3.1 inch pulleys to make more boost, changed over the pump gas to high octane race gas just to be safe, and fired up the dyno for some more.
This time we saw an increase in boost of about three pounds, up to 18.2 by the end of the pull. That translated to 1,133.4 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 944.5 foot-pounds of torque at 6,100 RPM. So that equals improvements in the peak numbers of 76 horsepower and 80 and a half foot-pounds of torque. Plus, across the range from 3,500 to 6,700 RPM, the average power increased by 49.7 horsepower. All that with less than 20 pounds of boost and on a power plant that isn't high strung like a full bore race engine and can go years between rebuilds. Still, we wanted to try one more test before calling it a day. All along, we wondered how the longish intake tubes between the air filters and the superchargers affected power. So we cut some tubing down to the absolute minimum length while still angling them up to get the air coming into the engine away from the hot headers. It turns out we lost 16 horsepower with this try, so I won't even put up the dyno graph. Our guess is the air didn't have time to smooth out from the point that it entered through the air filter until it was pulled into the supercharger and so it hurt airflow. We're basing that conclusion on the fact that we also lost about 7 tenths of a pound of boost as well. Overall, we were beyond impressed with this build. Because Prestige and Holly don't know who will win this engine or their skill level behind the wheel, so it'll be detuned to around 750 horsepower before the giveaway. At that level, this engine will be happy for endless road trips and burnouts, and it can make that power all day long without an intercooler if the owner chooses not to install one. Still, over 1,050 horsepower on pump gas and 1,130 something on higher octane fuel in any street vehicle is going to be an absolute beast. And maybe most impressive of all, after building the first one, the guys at Prestige told me that by intelligently substituting a few components, they can probably duplicate the power of this build for less than 20 grand out of pocket. It's not every day that you see twin centrifugal superchargers mounted up to an engine, but after the success of this build, we expect to see combos like this a lot more in the near future. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you back for the next great build.